So, welcome everyone. I warmly want to welcome you, even though we have one of our coolest days we've had so far in Austin. It's the middle of January, and I have a wonderful friend with me here, Bernard Cliff. And we thought we might talk with you a little bit today about those goals that you might not have found that you've stuck to, and ways that we can support you to perhaps go a little bit deeper with those goals so that you're not only going to be getting maybe what you want on the outer, but more so on the inner, that we can support you to have a life of the kind of health quality of energy and body that you really want. So that's kind of what we're up to today. So we're kind of talking about being the time of year that it is, the resolutions that people make, and, and then, you know, before the months out, already encountering the various ways in which life and schedules and challenges of getting through the day just seem to thwart anyone's, most, many people's resolutions to really go, go the whole, the whole path and take it to a, a good resolution. resolution. You know, one of the things that's most interesting to me is that contextually many of us look at our bodies as our enemies and that we're not, they're not doing what we want. Mm. Instead of recognizing that the level of wisdom in our body is so far beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And if we're having challenges, meeting some goals, maybe we're not meeting the body with enough respect and love and presence, and we might want to look at why it is that we're not getting what we want. There might be a good reason, because our bodies are here more than anything to protect us, to keep us alive, and to make sure that we are going to survive. So if we're doing something um, that's just too much, too heavy, too fast, or maybe the wrong tact for us, the body may not respond the way that we want it to. So basically, you're kind of pushing the body into a fight and flight response instead of being able to gradually shift into healing of some kind. Right, to relax into and find its new center, its new home, its new eco balance. So you have to be really kind and gentle with yourself as you get onto something that's new and different and that's not, not something that the body chemistry recognizes is routine everyday safe behavior. Yes. So for instance, today I'm going to talk to you about something very unique and wonderful. Most of us when we think about cleanses and detoxification, we think about detoxing an organ, the liver, or we think about doing just a colon cleanse or something like that. Today I'm going to talk about what it is to get down to the cellular level, inside the cells, inside the mitochondria, and also to acknowledge something that most of us don't even know really exists. And the term is the microbiome, and even the homobiome. The homobiome includes not only microorganisms, but virus organisms. I've never heard of the homobiome. Yes, the holobiome is the holographic, all of the different life forms that are inside of us that are helping us to fully function. It's funny because it almost sounds like the word hollow as in empty, but oh, you're actually like holographic. talking holographic or holistic. Yes. Right. And so, yeah, that's a good distinction to make. Yes, it really is. And it's so amazing because most of us just think, this is my body. This is all there is. Right. But actually, cellular-wise and genetic-wise, people are always talking about genes these days, right? Genetically, only 2% of this is human genes. 98% of my genes are part of that hollow biome. 
So 2% is the human physical genes, just yes. the physical part of a human being. Well, or human cells, we actually have 10% of our bodies are human cells. But there's so many more genes in our microbiome than there are in our human cells. It's really amazing. So we're actually just a sort of a, a walking community of other life forms than ourselves, yes. primarily. We're not even ourselves. Yeah, we're, we're like not this. ourselves, we're not ourselves. <laughs> we are, I mean, we, we do have a self, we do have a, a body, we do have... It's an identity, things. but it's not actually yeah. 2%. It's more, it's an identity that encompasses everything that we are. And we could get into this from a really spiritual point right. of view and start talking about, you know... Um, but then spiritual borderlines on science, and when science and spirituality meet, there is no more of the either that just becomes, there's no more spirituality in that holy sense, and there's no more science in that rigid Newtonian sense, it's just that it becomes what it really is, and yes. we're exploring that, and in exploring that we're discovering things about our bodies that are actually pointing us down the healing paths that we are working. I love it, Bernard. It's so right on. I mean, thank you for that insight. And, you know, it's it's so um, amazing to me. I'm 65 now, and I started on this journey when I was 14. I found the brilliant work of Rudolf Steiner, anthroposophy, and the anthroposophical medicine, and the whole realm of homeopathy. And I also was really deeply looking at things like the seen gospel of peace and diet and <clears throat> the early stages of my own experience were 14 detox based on the seen gospel of peace and water cleansing and enemas and uh, sunlight and um, working with uh, natural foods and what was growing during the time of year that I wanted to eat it, and all these basic laws of health. But now, scientifically, with our microscopes and all the rest of it, and cellular biology and genetic awareness, all these things are being proven as scientific facts, but they have a very direct healing uh, impact on our body. And so were you saying that you were doing this kind of a thing just for yourself when you were 14? I started to explore it at 14. I was working in a health food store. I, um, <clears throat> across from the health food store where I was, there was one of the very first yoga centers in Southern California for Satya Dananda. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and at 14, I dove in all four feet you know, into completely changing my diet. I grew up in a family that was Jewish and middle class, and we had lots and lots of um, frozen dinners. We had potato chips. We had Pillsbury boxes to make our cakes out of. Um, I lived on junk food. We had probably 100 cans of soda available at any given time. My dad had a big 20 cubic foot freezer. We didn't think butter was good for us. We only had margarine. I mean, I lived on food I would never even dream of putting into this body now that I love it and honor it and want to nurture it. I want real food that's been prepared and grown in love and with conscious farmers. And you know, it's a totally different paradigm that we're talking about now. And I started to discover that. At and my life has just unbelievably changed since then. So now taking all of that stuff that you've been talking about, what you first explored and experienced at such an early age, and then coming forward and going down the path of healing and helping people that you have, and now discovering so many things that people that, that we're becoming aware of yes. in this field mm -hmm. that relates to you know your, your initial approach to your body. Now, how do you, how, how are we tying, how are we tying that up to, to um, today's topic, which is to help people um, pursue and stay motivated on their resolutions and, and what kind of resolutions are you looking at? Right now for, for people? Well, 
Well, honestly, I mean, I'd love to think that people are really focused on how to honor, love, and be grateful for the body and how to start from that place and look at where they'd like to go and their image of what their body would look like if they were fully nurturing, loving, on honoring, protecting, and being in a state of gratitude for the opportunity to have a body to function in this way. The collection of microorganisms. Right, and there are <laughs> symbiotic buddies. You know, Friends. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. and it's amazing to me. I mean, we have been so focused on killing the bad guys, on using all kinds of antimicrobials on our skin and on our bodies, and that, that the microorganisms are the bad guys. But honestly, our bodies are crawling with microorganisms every second, and without them, they would not be protected. And the soil is filled with these spores and microbiomes and life-giving energy. Our soil is alive. We just think of it as dirt. But it's filled with microorganisms, as is our gut, as is our entire body, the skin on the inside, the mucosa on the outside. I mean, without the help of these buddies, we're in trouble. And there are some that can really wreak havoc with us. But it's so amazing to me. I, I believe it might be um, I, well, one of the, the microorganisms that we think of as so dastardly and that we have to take antibiotics for that literally holds 200% more aluminum per cell than our body cells do. So think about that for just a second. Those seemingly bad microbacteria are protecting us by holding on to that aluminum so our brains will not be overwhelmed with aluminum and go into possibly a state of Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or dementia or ADD or ADHD. So these are the, the, these are the, uh, the organisms that we're trying to kill every day with um Antibiotics, antimicrobials, and antifungals. And what you're saying is that they're actually our friends and they're good friends. Yes and no, because they're all alive, and so that means they have to eat, and they also have to <laughs> Lovely thoughts, right? All so, over me. Yeah, all, and inside of us. Yeah. And some of that poop is things like minerals and amino acids and nutrients we need. But some of that poop is Tops. inflammatory. Inflammatory. And causes, yes, it causes pain and discomfort. But if we have some pain in our joints because we have an overgrowth or a clostridium difficile, let's say, or something like that, and that clostridium difficile is holding 200% more aluminum, and if we go in there and take an antibiotic and kill it, we're going to release that aluminum into our bloodstream. And what does that mean? Hmm. So we don't think about the wisdom of the body in accumulating these different things. And our body accumulates them only because it's trying to keep us in survival. So if we don't have a lot of aluminum, well, then we don't need a lot of clostridium and dipensia. But we always have a little bit of it so that our body can access it if it needs it. And tell folks what Clostridium difficile is. So I'm not sure if this is the right um, microorganism for that actually holds the aluminum. Uh, I, I have see. to look it up. Okay. But Clostridium difficile, like, for example, like is... Giardia, you know, is a microorganism that people find offensive and it causes inflammation and it can cause diarrhea and it can cause bowel issues and it can cause aching and pains and headaches and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So people want to get rid of it. And it's quite common then. Oh, it's it? very common. In fact, uh -huh. we all have it. We all need a little bit of it. But not an overgrowth, overabundance. That's right. right. 
So the first thing that we want to do before we would get involved with trying to deal with those um, uh, supposed parasites or unwanted bacteria or fungus survivors is we want to do our best to bring balance back to the body to see how much we'll just leave on their own because they're hungry and there's no food for them anymore. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yes. And if we're feeding it the wrong, we're feeding ourselves the wrong food, then we're also encouraging it to stay around and That's right. join the feast. Yeah, because it's going to try and protect us. It's amazing. It really is. There is such love and compassion that is at the core of who we are as human beings. And these microorganisms are a major part of it. So the key is, what can we do that is not overly harmful to help us with these things? And sometimes these big bones, so to speak, are important because someone is suffering so immensely. But for most of us, we can start by finding a diet that is in unique alignment with our body. And it's different at different times of the year because the sunlight is actually our primary source of energy and healing. And that's another area so few of us ever think about that we ever really get into honoring the beautiful sunlight that we can catch, especially in the early morning when it first rises and all the beautiful colors and how inspirational that is for me, not as a cloudy, <laughs> which we've been a lot lately. But, but when we do have a clear sky and we can see all the colors, that, that enough is to, to, enough to open our hearts. But the light has different frequencies. Every color band has a specific frequency. And we think that these eyes are nothing more than cameras, but they're not. They are receptors that take these different frequencies of light into and back through the chiasmic, oh boy, all these big names. Anyway, they come in through the eyes and into the brain, and there they stimulate all the hormonal functions and everything we need, but in particular, Spending time in the morning with the source of our energy, with the sun, will help us to sleep deep at night is when our melatonin is made. And so we find that in the Aboriginal tribes all over the world who get up with the sun, who get fed with the sun, and they're outdoors and in the light and not covering themselves up with um, all kinds of sunscreens and chemical makeups and all kinds of weird, unnatural things on their bodies and antibiotic things and all the rest of it. When we're not doing that, but we allow our skin and our eyes to be exposed to the light, and we allow our feet to be on the ground and to feel the magnetism of the earth and to also receive the biome from the earth, the bacteria and everything that's in the grass, then our bodies have an amazing chance of getting well. There are even stories of people with serious diseases like cancer spending an hour or two every day lying on the earth without clothing on and just getting the sunlight and the magnetism from the earth and healing from that alone plus of course the pure food and water. And so, so um, this would be a good time of the year then to to get to, to start making these changes in one's life and to introduce a whole different way of but how long is this gonna take somebody and, and what, are, what are all the implications and is this something that's easy for people to do okay. in this world that we live in. And yes. Yes. So um you know easy is going to be something that different people have different ideas of. But today I wanted to introduce you to some of the brilliant work of character named Dr. Dan Pompa. And he's a chiropractor who has experienced some pretty severe physical suffering after starting out with an incredibly powerful, healthy body, an athlete, and all the rest of it. He got some mercury amalgams placed in his mouth. And he was particularly sensitive to the mercury. And it just 
through his whole ecosystem in his body, his whole hollow biome out of whack. And he became so ill he could hardly get out of bed. He was in profound pain, and aching, and could hardly walk. Uh, his brain went into brain fog and all that sort of thing. And I assume this was before people knew anything about all of these new discoveries that you're speaking of. Yes, this is about 25 years ago. And even the way that they tested for heavy metals in those days was just looking at a blood test that only told you about what was in the blood at the moment. And typically the body will take things like mercury and store them away outside of the bloodstream, in the bone, in the fat tissue, in places where um, it's not going to kill you. Right? Because mercury is one of the most toxic substances on the planet. I see. Hmm. So um, he didn't know what was going on, and he went on this huge journey. And while he was working on finding some answers for himself, and he did a lot with diet, which we'll be sharing about over time, um, he um, had another major challenge happen in his life. His wife's sister and brother-in-law were killed in a car accident, and they had three children. And two of them were on the spectrum, the autistic spectrum. And so, in addition to his own children, he took on these children, and it became a path of his compassion and his heart to find out what could help these children on the spectrum. So, what I'm about to share with you is something called true cellular detail. It's the process of over 25 years. Um, it's made through a company called Systemic Formulas. And any of you who have used Systemic Formula supplements know that they are food form and incredibly um, pure and really high quality supplements. One of the most brilliant men, Dr. Wheelwright, um, developed it many years ago. He was one of the first supplement providers that I discovered way back then in 1968, 69, and 70, um, his supplements, because they were so pure and wonderful. And what um, has happened over the years is that we looked at the source of the problem is how do we cleanse ourselves? That our nutrients come into our body through cell membranes and they're bilipid membranes, which means they're made out of fats. And one side is um, hydrophilic, meaning it lets water in, and the other side is lipophilic, meaning it goes through the fat. And if the membranes are healthy and happy, they will take nutrition in through the cells and into the cells that the microbacteria have broken down so that we can actually get them in there. Uh -huh. Isn't that wild? Back to that microbiome buddy system. Yeah. And then they will also take the toxins that are inside of the cell and send them out into the bloodstream so that the lymphatic system can deal with them, so that the bowels can deal with them, so that the kidneys can clear them, right. and out with the toxins. Right. And so we realize the incredible importance of having a healthy cellular membrane. And so a big part of what we're doing in this program is rebuilding a healthy cell membrane and helping the body to release toxins from the cell. And one of the best ways to support a cell not being toxic is to not be adding toxic substances into the cell. And that's what we're doing every day with our lifestyle. Well, most of us are, and then there's those of us who've been really interested in finding out ways that we can work with our diet so that we're not using our diet to do ourselves any further. So one of the biggest things that most of us don't realize, and it came to a big shock, a really big shock for me, is that sugar, even in natural forms like fruit, can create a huge toxic load inside of our cells and make it really hard for energy to be produced in ourselves. Wait a minute, so you're saying actually eating an apple or a piece of pineapple or a banana or a peach or some blueberries is, could be detrimental. It 
could be, especially if you're eating a lot. Because honestly, in nature, we don't find very many sweet things. And so genetically, we are not designed to be eating sweet things. And when I say nature, I mean like what was available 600 years ago. Before our produce became genetically modified, before people started hybridizing. hybridizing. Yes. Yes. And then apples were smaller. Right? Apples, almost every apple we eat has had a grafting process in order to make it so big and so sweet. Maybe juicy. So we've all had our challenges. <clears throat> and um, I was a very sickly child. And I also had colon cancer 30 years ago. And I found that by eating the food that was designed for me instead of the isn't it eating, that me as a spiritually aspiring young person wanted to eat, I became a vegetarian. Oh, so you did? I did. I lived on fruit and, and I stopped when the result was colon cancer. And you, you believe that the result, that, that was the result of eating fruit? I, or the I, sugar, the extreme amount the of, of sugar. fructose, right? Yes. And, I mean, I was living on beautiful mangoes. I was picking them I, I mean, because there is fructose, which is just the powder, which is right. separated from the fruit itself. But then the fruit, you're getting the fructose, mm -hmm. but you're also getting all the other valuable. Yes, except that there's a big question about how much is really valuable because of the hybridization. Mm -hmm. Because of the way that we are um, doing agriculture these days, where we're picking things way before they're ripe, right, mm -hmm. where they're being gassed or irradiated or mm -hmm. all kinds of things before they come to us, mm -hmm. it's a really different world. Now, I'm kind of an unusual person in that I had an opportunity when I was 17 years old to go and back the woods. I did that for a few years. And every three months I would come out of the woods and I would get more supplies, maybe be out of the woods for a few days and go back in. And I did that with a friend who was really gifted at figuring out all kinds of ways for us to live off of the land. So we ate squirrel. What? <laughs> <laughs> we did. He had a little rifle. Um, we ate squirrel. We would have a deer every six months that we would. Um, I got to do the skinning and trying to soften the hide, which I never did. I could never get it soft, but I tried everything that the Native Americans did to do it. Um, but we would jerk three quarters of it and eat a quarter of it. So, I, I also had a book with me on how to find foods that we could eat, what roots we could eat, mm -hmm. what barks we could eat, um, what plants we could eat. And I can tell you the only things that had any kind of sweetness that we found growing naturally were berries, and they were pretty darn sour. Mm -hmm. There were rose hips in the winter, which were so gorgeous, there would be snow. And then you see these bright red, pretty big rose hips uh -huh. that grew from wild, you know, roses. Uh -huh. And those would be such a treat to find when we were in the woods. And um, when I was in the southern areas, we found some crab apples. The crab apples are about this big, right. you know, and they do have some sweetness to them. You, I mean, you find sweetness mm -hmm. when you're not eating sugar all the time, of and things that yeah. you don't, yes. <laughs> that you don't necessarily yeah. think are sweet. But our bodies are not designed to eat big amounts of fruit. So we've become adapted and somehow dependent on yes. that need. It's I mean, an addiction. It is like an addiction. And actually, there's a, a reason for that addiction. It has to do with survival. It has to do with because there was so little of it in nature, and it was challenging. It's a lot of work to go get blackberries and a lot of scratches and a lot of... Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot that goes on to gather sweet things. You'd rather just go pick up a rifle and find a squirrel at that point. <laughs> 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 well, 
we did learn how to make traps and, and little snares and things. But yeah, yeah, and fish. We did fish quite a bit. Um, but it's it's a really when you actually get out there and look at what nature provides. There's not a lot of sweet. Some of the roots. There are some beautiful fruits that had. I mean, the beautiful flowers that had like a little round um, chestnut-like tasting mm -hmm. um, tuber at mm -hmm. the bottom. And when we were in Hawaii, there was taro that grew wild and things like that. Oh, there's honeysuckle. Oh, yeah, there's a lovely I love nectar honeysuckle. from honeysuckle. Right? I know. We and definitely. the best thing is if you found some honey, then I guess that was like vintage time. Oh yeah. But so we, we treated it like it was so special right. that we didn't binge on it. Of course, valuable, precious. Mm -hmm. So you 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 did this fructarian diet for how long, and then you discovered that it was the cause. Of well, your... I played with a raw food diet for seven years altogether, and the last two I was a fructarian. Okay. So in when I was doing my raw food thing. I, um, I, I, t I mean, we did pick a lot of fruit. I was living in Mount Shasta for a big part of that, and we would go out to where there were fig trees, and the neighbor, the people in the in the area had lots of cherry trees, and they always invited us hippie folk to come and Absolutely. pick as many cherries as we wanted, and we would dry them so we would have them for the summer. But my primary food was sprouts. Mm. I, I bought like a five pound bag of alfalfa sprouts and I would sprout those. Yeah. I was living in a teepee. Yeah, <laughs> <my chest. laughs> <laughs> but I could sprout things, you know, and, um, and I had a little wood stove in my, my um, uh, teepee. With, uh, anyway, it was, it was fun. It so was you fun. ended up saying any event, it was fun, but the, the funnest part, eating that lovely fruit. Uh -huh. Landed you in a bit of a pickle. It sure did. Because after you know spending those years backpacking in the woods and not having it, yeah, and then you know going to places like Hawaii and whatever, and you know, and then you know going to places like Mount Shasta where people had orchards and yeah. living in Ojai where they were amazing orchards, yeah. you know, orange orange orchards and avocado orchards. And but then you think of the native people in Hawaii; they were eating, they had access to fruit, a lot of fruit. They did, but you know what they ate mostly was fish and pork. Pork. You and know, roots, I'm sure. Oh yeah, they ate a lot that. of taro. But but do we know for a fact that those native peoples had a had a had a knowledge that um, eating too much fruit would be bad? You know, it's interesting. Fruit even has cycles in places like Hawaii. Right. So you eat it at a certain time of year when right. when it's right. Mm -hmm. So the more sun we have, and obviously in Hawaii they have lots of sun, the more our bodies are able to use carbohydrates wisely and break them down so that we don't create a sludge inside of ourselves, which is what happens. It's almost like our, we have a, um, a fire in the fireplace and we close the, the damper so that the smoke can't go out the top. And after it fills up the fireplace to a certain degree, it starts coming out and polluting the rest of the body. Sugar actually has a byproduct that's like that thick sludge inside of our cells. And if we don't break it down, in other words, if we take more than our bodies can use effectively, we're going to have toxic cells. And that typically means that you don't have the energy that you used to. You don't have the mental clarity that you used to need. That there's brain fog, that there's ease in irritability <laughs> and hormonal issues. Women having problems with their menses and all the rest of it. I mean, it really, and then the bottom line is we get gut issues. And those gut issues directly affect our brain. And when we now know that the the gut cells and the brain cells are identical and they form at the same time. And what happens to the gut happens to the brain. We talk about leaky gut, where the, um, the villi spread open and allow for the toxins in the bowel to go out into the bloodstream. 
Well, we also can get a leaky blood brain barrier. It's the same sort of thing where the brain will lose the nutrients it needs and allow toxins in. And what have we been doing for so many years? We've been putting mercury right here, which is so close. Every time you bite down and mercury gets a chance to go up into the brain, we're in trouble. So what we've done is, and um, I should say that what Dr. Pomp has done is he's created a form of protocol. Where you start out with the first month, and he uses something called prep phase. Now, when he was in the process of creating this, we used to have all these bottles of supplements that we used to have to take and take at different times of the day, and open them up and take pills out and all the rest. Yes. But what he's done instead is he's made these little packets. And you can unzip this little part. And I'll show you on this little zip that we've been taking. So this is unzipped. And this is um, a body phase where we have one packet that we take in the morning one packet we take in the afternoon or the evening, and one packet that we take before we go to bed. And that's part of the body phase. So you have four boxes down there. I do. There's four months, and so, each box is for a month. Okay. Now that's if you happen to be a really healthy person, okay? And you can just zip right through those four months. But most people who come into our practice and by the way, my beloved is an amazing alternative medical doctor. His background was first in pharmacology. Um, and then after finishing pharmacy school, he went into medical school. And then from medical school, he became a board certified anesthesiologist. And then after he saw his mother die a horrible death from the medical model way of dealing with colon cancer, he became an alternative medical doctor. Mm. So Rich and I worked together with all these sort of and I tend to be the one who nurtures and takes care of people and takes them through diet and gets them into the kitchen and shows them how to do all of this and do their detoxes. And for those of you who are willing, I'll teach you how to do things like coffee enemas, sauna protocols, and things where you can really help to move toxins out through your skin, support that biome in your skin. Um, there's just so many amazing things that we include in this program. It's huge what can happen for you in those four months. But when we fine tune for people, sometimes we'll find, like for instance, in this prep phase, so there is- Is that the first month? This is the first month. Okay. And in here, we have things that are great for the liver and opening up the liver to release toxins and great for the kidney. We have special types of fatty acids, specific ones for the membranes of the cells, that we were talking about, those bilipid membranes that allow the toxins in and out. And we also have special membranes for the mitochondria that has everything to do with it. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then we have things that support your energy function and also the methylation process. So typically when people do this, they feel fantastic. And the prep phase is? To build you up. To build your body. To make you strong so that your body will not be hurt by starting to move into detox. So you haven't started the detox yet, you're still getting your body prepped. That's for right. It. And during and that's this for a month. That's right. And during this time we're we're gently supporting you in changing your diet. Because if you didn't do that, you would have a very stressful detox experience. I Some assume. people would. Yeah. And especially people who have symptoms of inflammation. And you could actually make the situation worse or even more. You could feel pretty uncomfortable. Um, yes. And the body can it. deal with it. It may go into some kind of dysbiosis or something. Well, most of us are in dysbiosis all the As time. As it is. <laughs> Where the body's constantly trying to find balance with it. So it's, you know, yeah. going in and out of dysbiosis all the time as the body uses things. So we've done this prep phase now. Well, I was just going to say that part of what we're doing during the prep phase is educating. And this is one of the most amazing things about doing true cellular detox. Because we have a portal. And that portal has like 50 different um, videos that talk to you about how do we support our mitochondria. 
And that's basically by increasing our fat content, having a very modicum amount of protein of specific high quality, drinking plenty of good clean water, and learning how to substitute for the things that we are um, addicted to. So like for instance, we do all kinds of wonderful things and we sweeten them with stevia so that we can get them. Slowly we're going to be moving all that in enormous amounts of fruit that most people put into smoothies that they think are so good for them. We'll be reducing those fruits, we'll be adding in greens, we'll be talking to you about adding seaweed to your life. I mean, most of us need iodine desperately in this, in this country unless you happen to live at the ocean and you're breathing in iodine all the time. But we can get iodine from good quality seaweeds and I'm not just talking about those little, you know, nori wraps and things like that. Sure. I'm talking about really dense seaweeds that are loaded with nutrition and they are so mild tasting, you don't even hardly taste them. But they're giving you this amazing, all these minerals that are you know, part of the ocean. So, so we want to learn how to eat foods that are just nutrient dense. And the amazing thing is certain foods that I was repulsed by before, mm -hmm. as I started to get the fats in to my body, which I always thought were going to make me fat, and it's just the opposite. Fats actually support your body in burning fat. And in burning clean, remember we talked about how smudgy it would get inside the, the yes. cells? Well, if we are to eat sugars, they burn like damp wood. They are smudgy. Huh. When we burn fats, it's like burning the burning gas flame. It's just pure fire. There's no smoke. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when we actually, not just fats, I should say, that's what happens when we burn ketones. Okay. And ketones are uh, an amazing type of fat that were the first foods we ate as babies. When we were in the womb, the last three months of our lives in the womb, and our brain is being formed. Ketones are the primary nourishment of the fetal baby. And if we are nursed the way we're supposed to be, then we're going to be getting a very high ketone type of fat in our mother's milk, which also helps profoundly in the development of our brains and of our bodies and of our muscles and of our sinews, but especially it's important. And it's so important these days when we have so many children being born with um, all kinds of toxicity in their bodies already. So, for instance, the studies now show over 125 toxic chemicals in cord blood. That's before the baby's even born, but it's picked up from this mother wow. inside the womb. And over 30 of them are carcinogens. Oh. So, one of my favorite oh my things, goodness. I know, brother, it's huge. I guess so, we should take a moment to feel that. I, I kind of rushed through it because mm. I know how painful it is for us to think about it, but it is important for us to reflect on that. And one of my deepest joys is when a husband and wife comes to me and says, we want to have a healthy baby we can't. Mm. And for years, I've been working with people to show them how to clear the toxins out of their bodies mm -hmm. and to work with what we call homeopathy miasmas or inherited weaknesses and to clear those so that our children don't need to carry that. Right. And one of the beautiful things that Rich, my beloved, is so profound at working with is called recall healing. And he helps us with creation of um, family trees and going in and finding the issues that were not completed by our ancestors. And even emotional issues will create a tag in our DNA. So if they were not taken care of by our ancestors, we are our children. Mm. And every emotion has, and every situation just about, has a reflection in an organ based on its function. Well, that's a huge topic that 
take up an hour on its own, however, it gets transferred over from one generation to the next. But if you're interested, we have YouTubes on our website that Dr. Massey has done, Mitch Massey, and um, I think body biology is one of the best to take a look at right now, but he's constantly doing more. And um, when we do the true cellular detox with people, we have our unique background. And so we want to help people on the deepest level who are committed to getting well to do that. So part of what we're doing is when we offer True Sign of Detox, Rich will do a session with them on recall healing to help them get in touch with what is the issue from the, their, either their birth or the time in the womb or their first year in life or their ancestors that have caused the health issue, contributed, I should say, to the health issue that they're suffering with now. So do you feel like if they don't do the recall healing part of it, they're not really getting the full benefit of them and even be hampering the, the, the detoxification process itself, that it may not be fully... I don't want to go that far, exit. but I do really know, have seen, have experienced in our patients, in ourselves, I and mean, I can tell you stories about myself and Rich, but we don't have time today. But you'll find those, actually, if you go to our YouTube uh, on body biology under awakeninghealth.com. Um, and it's in the media section. And if you look for Rich Massey first and then body biology, you'll see okay. the discussion about this. I mean, people's tumors with cancer have literally just gone away without doing any detox work. <laughs> it's quite amazing. Now, I personally feel that it's important to love, honor, and nourish our bodies, even if a, an illness goes away, so that we can experience the highest quality of life possible. Right. So, but the actual disease process itself can go by awareness of the cause of something that took place from the ancestor. That is amazing. It really is. So, um, I so I would definitely out. say, yeah, check all of that out. Right. And then, you know, I started out kind of unusual having my, um, my interest level in alternative medicine beginning with Rudolf Steiner, who was in Germany and Austria. Right. So, uh, Germany and Austria and Switzerland and Sweden and Russia, they are so far ahead of us in alternative medicine and recognizing the oneness of all of the different um, uh, organs and how they work together and how everything affects everything. Yes. That's quite a mouthful. I mean, it's really true, though. Everything does affect everything. So that way of looking has been part of my excitement, and I've really lent myself to studies of European and um, Russian work and all of that way more than just American-oriented work. And even now, I would say most of the alternative doctors have found that their most profound teachers have brought German technology to the United States. And one of the things you've really gotten into lately is... Homeopathy? Well, homeopathy has been with for quite a while, yeah. but, but the, uh, the other thing, the, uh, the, oh, the monitoring. Thermometry. Thermometry. Right, so we have an extraordinary test with called thermometry, and we can talk to you more about that. We're going to do a whole YouTube on it because it's so much to look at. But just a quick little piece about thermometry is that looks at who we are from an autonomic nervous system point of view and how to upregulate and support our autonomic nervous system, the part of us that is doing everything that we are not conscious of. Like I can tell my hand to, you know, my fingers to close. No, that's not autonomic. But what's autonomic is if I go outside and the sun is bright, my pupils will get tiny. Or I go into a dark closet, my pupils will get big. Well, my cells respond like that to everything. They get small or big. Every little cell in your body has a response that you're not trying yeah. to take charge of. Trillions of them every second. We, if we tried to take charge of them, we would go crazy. I mean, there's so much in every second. And so that's what an aut autonomic, um, what, what, that's what you mean by autonomic? Nervous system. Nervous system. 
Yes. So, uh, so you use so that's where you're going with thermometry. Yes, with thermometry, we're looking at how the autonomic nervous system is responding to all of your organs and tissues, and even on your teeth. And we we bring all that information together, and then we look at the priorities of imbalances uh -huh. with the thermometry. And then. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, I have not included that in our package because we're trying to keep the price down so much. Yeah. But um, if people wanted to experience the thermometry before and after, you'd have to come here to Austin, um, and we would do we would add on to the price for that too. Oh, yeah. But oh, we work see. with people all over the country now doing these things. And one other piece that we do that is very unique to Rich, he's He's really made this happen on a whole new level. Many of you might know about dark field microscopy when you look at live cells moving in the blood. And we do that too. But we look at dry blood as well. And very few people have mastered the arena of dry blood. So with dry blood, we take um, a drop of blood and we use a little um, slide and we'll tap it six different times and we'll look at we'll let that dry and then we'll look at the picture that that creates when people are here we actually show it to them because it's really kind of miraculous you can watch the drying happen and it's it's almost like an explosion and you can watch connections being made as the fibers connect and create a strong and healthy connective tissue and things with the body you can also see where that's not and there's these big, what we call white lakes that show up when somebody has uh, cancer activity in the body, strongly. It's, it's pretty amazing. And, can, and it's a diagnostic? It's a diagnostic tool, kind of, sort of. I, I mean, I, I don't want to say it from the point of view of medicine. It's a very powerful like indicator. Indicator. Yes. So there's a circle that the blood makes, and the inside is going to be the core of the and it's going to show us more what's going on with the colon. And as we move out, we move all the way out to the skin and the lymphatic system on the outside of the circle. Mm -hmm. And each area of the circle has to do with a different part of the body. And so we can see if the, there's strong netting, we call it, and everything's interconnected and buddy buddy and they're friends, or if it's all broken, or if there's what we call um, liver lines or lymphatic lines showing that the lymph system isn't getting into that area oh. effectively. So in Europe, if you were to go to a cancer clinic or a autoimmune clinic or or even just a regular get healthy clinic and really look at your whole self or recovery, they would do the thermometry. We call it regulation thermometry there. And for them, regulation is the primary way they describe the autoimmune healing system. Um, and then they would do, they would look at the blood, both live and dry. And when we do this for people, as part of our True Cellular Detox program, we will look at your dry blood twice, in the beginning and at the end of the program. Uh, almost all the doctors who are doing True Cellular Detox are doing a urine test that will give us an idea of how toxic the cells are. So it's an intracellular test. And it's very simple. You just pee in a tube, or pee in a cup, and then you just take a small amount of um, uh, urine and you dip a stick in to watch the color change. And by the color change, we can see how toxic the, um, uh, the intracellular space is inside your cells. And, um, and then we do that before and after. And so anywhere in the world you are, we can send you those little strips and we can do that test. We also um, do a test that involves um, working with um, the eyes. And this is a test that was developed by Dr. Richie Schumacher. And he used this to not check and see how big of a letter you need to read. <laughs> But these soft tones of gray, and um, he uses a special device to check them, which I have. And they, you can also do this online. And um, okay. it will show us whether you have a lot of toxins in your cells and uh, the, 
potential of um, uh, molds and biotoxins. And so those are the toxins that are like a byproduct of substances like molds or chemicals in our body or ammonia in our body, for instance. They have a biotoxin that they create. You know, we talked about how the byproduct of certain toxins can be, make us really sick or they can be very beneficial. So this is looking at those biotoxins that are part of that process and to see how high they are. And we check that those levels before and after as part of the site we talk about. I see. And oftentimes we'll find that when we get into working with removing the heavier toxins, the heavy metals, and the toxins out of the brain, that it's hard on people. So we stay in no close communication by phone call. And um, or texting or emails. And let's say that you know if you're really strong and healthy, we'll do a prep phase the first month, and the second month we'll do a body phase, and the third month we'll do a brain phase, and we'll just go right through them. Is the brain phase the one where it starts to get really tough and you're trying to get the stuff up? And that's mm -hmm. that's why it's not right up front. It that's right. down the down the line. So you're building you yourself up towards getting a really thorough detoxification and even out of the brain, which I understand is not that easy to get the toxins out of the brain. No, but this system you have here actually goes right in there as you follow the course day after day mm -hmm. and pulls out every bit of toxin that you can. And by the time we get to the body phase, we're starting to introduce the toxin pullers. We are introducing something called binders. The body phase is number Two. Two. Okay. So by the time we get to the body phase, we are starting to introduce binders, and that's those are located in the section called night. And the binders help to pull toxins out of the bloodstream into the bowel to be released. So the, 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 the supplements that you take at night that right. are working, you take them before bed, and those are the ones that are pulling that. Okay. And some people need more help. So if they do, and even if they don't, I'd love for them to do coffee enemas. Oh. And at some point we'll talk about that. But the coffee, and it's always up to you what you're going to do, but the coffee enemas are profound at causing a release of bile from the gallbladder and the bile duct into the liver and cleansing the liver. And people feel so good after they do a proper coffee enema. And in the last number of years, we've discovered some really amazing things to help make the coffee enema process even more profound, which stimulate the release of the gallbladder even more, like using some tangerine oil mixed with salt. And I'm using um, uh, electrolytes in my coffee enema to make sure that we don't get dehydrated. But I also use homeopathic cell salts that help to prevent um, uh, dehydration, which can be a real problem when you're detoxing. Actually, dehydration can be a huge problem anytime, anywhere. So we want to teach the body, and that's the beauty of homeopathy, we want to teach the body how to keep itself hydrated. And homeopathic remedies actually teach your body and show your autonomic nervous system that it's important enough for, to you that you're going to give it a remedy to remind it. And once it gets that you really are committed to being hydrated, it just doesn't go really and becomes part of your life for the rest of your life, but your body does have hydrated. It's pretty cool. And that's true with anything that we use homeopathically. So, you know, we all have our unique issues. Some women have horrible menstrual cycles, some have PCOS. You know, some men are having issues with their prostates or erectile dysfunctions. Whatever the issue is, it will be profoundly benefited by having clean cells. And once we've cleansed your cells and we see what's happened, then we can start addressing whatever's left over. And sometimes we decide to address those things while we're doing intracellular detox. I see. And for some people, we may discover that the prep phase feels so good 
the first month. The first month. It's amazing how great you feel. You have so much more energy and mental clarity and everything. And then you start going into starting to pull out some toxins here. And for some people, they can only handle a couple days of this. And then we'll do two or three days of this to help them get the strength. And then we'll go back in and do a couple days of this. So I like to make sure that I'm treating you as your unique self not just saying you have to do this and then you have to do this and then you have to do that and it doesn't matter how miserable you are. Your body is telling us it's uncomfortable for a reason and we want to listen to it. So typically if it's miserable, it needs more support and more nourishment, which we give it from the practice. And you're able to establish that just by how the how do person it? feels during the, the detox. And yeah. then so once you've been through those two months and it might take a little longer because you have to skip back a bit. Yeah, you um, might need to get an extra box of prep phase. Or... Right, but then once you've gotten past that, then now you're ready to go on to the... To the, the actual brain phase. The brain phase. Right, and then afterwards there's one other little box which I didn't bring in, which um, some people don't include in their programs, but I like to, and it's just called the Vitality Protocol. And it's, it's a it's the last phase where you're just given basic nutrients to help keep you strong and healthy. And you know many people like them enough that they might continue those for the rest of their lives or for a long period of time. But most of the people who have health issues, they want the prep phase as their foundation nutrient. Sure. Now what? So much. Now what happens during the, the brain phase is. Um, what do people experience when they're actually detoxing right out of the, the, the brain. brain? Yeah, but sort of, I think people expect that to be. So some people get headaches, some people get flu-like symptoms. And when those happen, that's when I want them to do coffee enemas, that's when I want them to do saunas with nice and flushing and things like that. They will really help to move the toxins out through their skin and out through their bowels so that it's not in the bloodstream making them toxic or and the skin is a very important. Skin is amazing. For releasing all of those. I, um, there's a special song that I totally love, and we'll do a show on it one of these days called The Farisage. And um, basically, what we see is that I, like, I recently had someone call me up and they said, When I did my sauna, my towel was covered with this dark, icky looking stuff. And I said, time to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Those are toxins coming out of your skin. Yes. And so that what I have people do is while they're in the sun, keep an extra towel. And as they sweat, just keep mopping up that sweat. So you don't leave it on your skin mm, to get go I'll back see. in again. I'll see. I use a sauna that your head sticks out of so you're not breathing in the toxins back into your body, into your sinuses, and back up into the brain. So that way your, your body is in the sauna, but your head is not saying, I'm breathing that in. And the head doesn't like to get hot anyway. And for men, neither do the gonads, so I really recommend that you have a cold rag for that. But um, anyway, the bottom line is that after you get done with your sauna, you jump into the shower. And I don't use soap. On my body. I just don't. I don't believe in using soap. I want my microbiome to be supported. Right, because the soap is just going to strip all of that right. off of your skin. But if you have. And expose it to mm -hmm. things you don't want. You got it. But if you happen to have um, that really dark colored toxic stuff coming out of your skin and with your sauna, that's the one time that I say that a clear, a really clean, just simple castile soap, organic castile soap, sure, so and um, go ahead and rinse your body down with it, so. and then take a shower. And if you want, I um, would recommend that you take some kefir or yogurt, homemade, and just water it down and put it all over your body to help recreate your bio on your skin. Is that right? You yes. can just leave that there. Or you you can. You can. Interesting. Yes. In fact, in Russia, and here's some more of the brilliance of you know, the folks from other countries. Um, in Russia, women would have a small jar of kefir 
either in their shower or by the toilet. Mm -hmm. And every time they um, they wash themselves, mm -hmm. particularly rectally and vaginally, they would take a handful of kefir and just wipe themselves with it to repopulate the bacteria there. And in that way, they didn't have vaginal infections and bladder infections and all the rest of it. It's amazing how people knew all of this stuff for so, for so many centuries, isn't it? Yes, and, and we just don't do it anymore. We just discarded all. This wisdom, we just thought it was stupid. So, <laughs> but now we can see it in your electron microscope, the amazing right, bacteria that's right. there. So what about saunas? If you you know if you can't manage to have the kind of sauna that you're talking about, and you just want to go and use the sauna at your gym, um, is that is that helpful? Or is, well, saunaing is. I mean, you've got your hair in the heat, and, and you're you, getting and exposed you're, to everybody's toxins, and you've, everybody else's toxins. Are they floating in the air and breathing those toxins in a sauna? Yeah. So I mean, honestly, I think it might be wise if you're going to be doing that and if you're not healthy. Because here's the thing, being exposed to lots of people's biome gives you a more diverse biome. And that can be a really good thing. We found that families that have like 13 children have the healthiest people because they're all sharing the same biome in the same house. Not to speak of when people used to live in tribal right, right. communities mm -hmm. and, and share everything. Out in the dirt, yes, and they don't wash their hands, and they're you know they're just sharing their files with each other, yes. and having dogs lick you in the face and stuff. I mean, they're sharing their biome. So if we are if we are supporting our biome, those sorts of things won't make us sick. They'll just make us more diverse and healthier and stronger. Yes. So it's pretty amazing. And I've even been told about a tribe in Africa where they eat absolutely no protein, and humans can't exist without protein. But their biome has mutated over the centuries to be able to take the food that they were eating, which is primarily um, uh, carbohydrates, and turn it into proteins. Awesome. And fats. That's amazing. It is. So, I mean, our biomes can do everything for us if we don't mess with them and hurt them with every, everywhere we turn. <laughs> but we have to be strong too. And, you know, a, a big part of what's going on is that we, we have just done so much to hurt ourselves. Vaccinations are dreadful right. on the bio. And as are um, uh, birth control pills and... Um, all of those things. Yes, all, all the uh, sunscreens and everything. Yeah, so, so okay, so someone has decided that they really want to clean up their act this mm -hmm. year. Um, you, you, you suggest, you feel that the best place to start is with a full comprehensive detoxification program like the one that you, you're, you're, you're very enthusiastic about. Yes, yeah. I think it's a great place to start. And honestly, I'm not saying that there's not other really important tests and things to do. And also, um, it's not just for, you know, I'm going to start this year and I'm going to address this particular thing. It's, it, it'll address many different um, things that you're trying to to resolve. Or, oh my God. Or just, if you think about the gut brain. I mean, people have many different issues and some of them right. are more predominant than others. Right. And, so the gut brain has a relationship to everything. We talked about everything affects everything. Mm -hmm. Well, the gut brain has a huge impact on just about everything. The gut and the liver are totally connected with each other. The liver has to do with our joints. The liver has to do with our ability to detox chemicals. The liver has to do with blood sugar the, and diabetes and all of that. Right. The liver has to do with inflammation and pain. The liver has to do with our eyesight. So when we are working with the, um, the true cellular detox, the liver controls the digestive system. So we're going to be working with the digestive system that's connected to all that. Now then when we work with the lymphatic system, we're talking about the blood and the bloodborne diseases. And the kidneys, we're talking about fluids and fluid retentions and all of the different types of fluids. So the interconnection that happens with this is profound. Now sometimes 
there may be such an obvious homeopathic remedy that will bring relief to somebody that I'll suggest that they do that while we're working. I see. Because we part of this program is during um, a few months you have unlimited access to me for consult. I see. So I want to hear from you and I want to know how you're doing and if you're having problems. And um, and if you are, then we will address those problems so that we make sure that you're getting the most benefit from all of this. And we may decide that we want to do a homeopathic remedy alongside of it. Or that it is particularly important for you to do saunas or to do baths. Or, you know, there's wonderful detoxification baths that we can do for radiation for um, uh, inflammation and pain and all that sort of thing. So you can guide people into integrating all of these different modalities that you offer That's right. in order to um, fully address. It's not just a matter of here, take this box, take it, one of these boxes each month and you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm not going to leave people You want to yeah. you want to be able to actually address whatever is going on for them because everybody has so many, has so many different issues. And, I guess, um, I guess that um, that could be really, really helpful. Oh, it really can. We've seen some really amazing results. I was thinking of a young woman that I've been working with who is from India, and she was so suffering with parasites, it was unbelievable. She could hardly get out of bed. She had horrible chronic fatigue. This beautiful young woman in her early 20s had huge dark bags under her eyes. She could never sleep through a night. She felt like being in bed all day long. It was hard for her to be in sunlight and light for her eyes and everything. And now she couldn't work, obviously. And now she's back to work and she's outdoors and she's having a great time. And we've just started to address the parasites and she can handle it. And I was so amazed. We went really slowly with her. We went back and forth with the prep phase. Like she went through three boxes of prep phases while she just went through one, one box of body phase. But by the time they got to the other side of it, she was strong enough that she could take all of the detox drops. And you've done the program yourself. So, I mean, there are people that can only take one or two detox drops without feeling headachy or sick, and she could take all 20 drops. It was just amazing to me. So, yes, our bodies want to help us they, we just need to stop creating roadblocks to their being able to do that. And this can help people who are also struggling with weight and controlling food desires and food it's, choices. It's quite amazing. When people start getting this, their cells healthy, they're not screaming for quick energy anymore. They have solid, long-time energy, which happens from ketones. And when you start moving into ketosis, and we'll be talking about gentle ways of moving into a ketotic state, then your body can effectively burn and you start losing weight and you start losing fat. It's not about losing muscle, it's about losing fat. And um, you lose the toxic fat. And that's why it's so great to be doing this kind of a cellular detox. Because toxic fat is toxic fat. It can make you feel really bad. So we're helping your body as you're getting rid of the place that we store the toxins, which is in the fat and in the bones, with a protocol that actually can address it because it's going into the cells. It's not just, you know, making you poop. Right. Not that that's not important. We need to make sure you're pooping. <laughs> These all the way, through, yes, all the way through this program, and I love to see people pooping two or three times a day with healthy, <laughs> beautiful stool. And I'm not afraid to talk about you know what that is when we're working together and looking at photographs of your stools, and so we know that we're on the right path together. Yes, always. but yeah. So, this is very awesome. <laughs> I think that um, I bet everybody needs to do. <laughs> you know, there's very few people I found in this country that don't. There are some that really have just made such a commitment to living a natural life. Yeah. You had parents who did too. Yeah. But it is rare. I just want to say one quick thing for you moms out there 
you know, are those of you who are planning to have babies. You know, this is so first. So um, let's let's give our kids a chance to have strong health and in a future that where they have the brilliant minds to deal with the insane challenges that we will face. So I just really, um, first of all, thank you, Bernard, for being so supportive and drawing out all this information for me because it's so different than I Yes, I hope it wasn't an overload for people. <laughs> we are, yeah, you can just watch part of the time if you need to. <laughs> or just call Meridian up and ask her directly. Yes, you can do that too. So my phone number is 512-698-7009. Our website is awakeninghealth.com. You can find the information that you need there. But please feel free to use that phone number to text me especially. Um, texting is the best way to get a hold of me. And if you want to send me a long email, just text me that you did that. And the phone number again is 512-698-7009. Thank you so much for taking time during your precious life right now. So that is our most precious asset is life. To listen to me and to consider doing what you can to nourish your body. So, thanks. Thank you. I hope it recorded. <laughs>